But I'm gonna get really real with you guys and speak to what I have personally experienced and what I commonly see people, particularly within a personal development and spiritual communities, um, are doing and avoiding intimacy. Yeah, so, um, and I'd love to know what you resonate to and can see in yourself and how you're actually sabotaging the love, intimacy, pleasure, play, um, and sex life that you want and relationships that you want um, by telling yourself these stories of I will have this when, I, I will have this once. Yeah, so um, I was on a couple of calls this morning with men that I was connect connecting on a personal level and we were talking about my journey this year and I was sharing how um, I've actually slowed down in my business and I've taken a step back and why I did that. And um, it's because I got really clear and, and, on, on, and really called myself forward on how I was unconsciously avoiding intimacy and helping everyone else to have the intimacy they want, helping everyone to have the love and relationships and having creating epic results for my clients. Um, but keeping myself so busy focusing on giving and helping everyone else at the detriment to my own, my own intimate life. And it's not to say I had no intimacy at all, but not to the level that um, I was even keeping my uh, clients accountable for, right? Um, and I knew, and I actually knew, like there was a conscious part of me that knew that's what I was doing, but it was almost uncontrollable. Like I would always be looking for the, like creating the next thing, yeah? So I always had a story about um, when I would date, or when I would make time to talk to men, um, you know, when I would make time for more connection and more play, it's like, well, when I've finished writing my book, when I've launched my next thing in my business, when I've run this event, when I've settled in a new home, when I'm not traveling so much, when I'm not moving around so much, um, when I've made X amount of dollars, yeah, this was the stories and it would always be the next story that I'd be telling myself, the next excuse around why I wasn't making time for pleasure, play, intimacy and connection. You know, not, not to the degree that I really wanted to be experiencing. And there was this point after an event this year that I felt this depth of emptiness and I felt this depth of like, like it was like empty and depleted and I'd just given so much and I was like, I actually can't give anymore. And one of the things or two things that I did this year is I took myself through a process I created which was to release my roles so everyone creates these roles as children and these roles are to keep us safe so we don't get abandoned so that things like the martyr and the rescuer and the caretaker and the hustler um, and the star and the smart one and um, the victim and and there's over functioning roles and under functioning roles so I was a chronic over functioner and as long as I'm doing something Therefore, therefore I'm valuable and therefore I'm worthy. And the more I could show up in doing and giving and providing, then this would be safe for me because then I would be some type of value to people. And so um, I, I was aware of this and I created these role releasing processes um, and I took myself through them. <laughs> Um, and a mentor of mine, Alex Tripod, also, um, she really introduced me to role, roles last, at the start of last year, and I deep dived and added some of my own processes to them. And um, I ended up not realizing how powerful this would be. <laughs> um, and they're really powerful, um, and I'm quite, quite powerful. And what happens when you release a role is you go into who the fuck am I if I'm not this role? Because this role was created to keep yourself safe and to not be abandoned essentially. Because at an instinctual level, if we're abandoned, we die, right? And I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna get to how this is linked to intimacy, by the way, because it's, it's, it's like intrinsically linked. Um, and so, 
basically I released myself from these roles. So the hustler, which was like the pushing and the doing and the giving and the making shit happen, was like like this deep ingrained role that I'd had since um, childhood. So I released myself from that role and that was, um, I didn't realize the effect that would have on me. Um, where I just didn't want to do anything. <laughs> I just really wanted to surrender. And um, and then the other one was the caretaker. So the caretaker was, you know, in my business, I would take care of a lot of things myself and I even co-facilitated events. And in those roles, I just automatically did things. I just started doing things. And um, then often we'd find a little bit of resentment come up because I didn't feel like I was being supported, but I just did the things and I didn't even second guess it. So that was huge for me. And I was also a caretaker in my relationships where I would just look after things and not ask for what I needed because I'd always taken care of things myself. And so, um, and last year I released the, the rescuer as well. So there was like a lot of role releasing going on. And essentially when you release a role, you come more into alignment with who you are on a soul level. And there's a transition period between that and the transition period is very uncomfortable because it's like, well, who am I without these roles? And it's scary and it's you know, stuff like fear of abandonment and like, what is my worth if I don't, if I'm not showing up in these ways, who am I? And to not act from that place is, is how I had to be like not launching anything, not, not, not writing my book, not traveling not running programs or events like not launching anything new i still launched a few things but they were very like on the down low like i didn't go crazy like with them um not not showing up on social media taking social media apps off my phone from time to time like really just destroying all this outside stuff that had been feeding my role you know and even social media like like all these things were feeding my role and like you'll see that this year but like compared to how i've shown up in the previous years it's just like i've not been doing the interviews the same and i've not been doing media stuff and i've not been um yeah didn't have only just finished editing my book which has been sitting on my computer for like a year waiting to be done um and essentially what I needed to look at was the going to the core of why I was what I was avoiding instead of like for so for example um, it's not okay so it's not intimacy that we fear it's actually the consequences of intimacy so in most people the consequences is, is abandonment yeah and so it's it's essentially where constant most people are consistently unconsciously trying to avoid abandonment because if you get abandoned from the tribe you die and so we're there's a part of our brain that wants to avoid that and if and for most of us if in some life we've experienced abandonment in that intimate relationships particularly as children with our parents and loved ones then there will this fear will be there and we'll create our world based on trying to avoid that and we create these roles that are not in alignment with who we are to avoid at the core being abandoned. So to have the intimacy that you want, there has to be a willingness to be abandoned, yeah? And so this has been my last, particularly the last few months, in the, in, but mostly this year, I've been really dropping the things that were like, where I could really see were coming from a role and, you know, making more time for connection, for play and for pleasure and, and and it means that I like I've had my, my incomes had to drop I've had to step down from my leadership role more and that's edgy for me because it took a lot of hard work to create that right but I know that I'm coming back now in a whole new more aligned way and you may even find that I'm sharing differently and I'm speaking differently and I'm more clear and I'm more present and I'm more grounded because I'm not so I'm coming more from a soul aligned place rather than from a role that the role usually is seeking to want to be validated and want to be loved and want to be approved of and it's like i'm here to really be in service rather than in validation yeah i'm here to be in service and to share because actually like i see so many people avoiding intimacy and if there's one thing that i really want for people is for people to have the intimacy they want and to stop doing all the shit that is actually not going to fulfill them and actually go to the core of the avoidance because when you get to the core of the avoidance and and hear what's going on there then 
um, you'll actually feel the fulfillment instead of trying to get or do something to get to the fulfillment like the next thing then this thing will fulfill me and this thing will fulfill me and then they'll do this thing and then once I have this thing and once I have this thing which is all just avoidance of trying to you have to go into those deep dark places and feel the fears and, and feel the wounds and feel the trauma and feel all of that that will actually crack you crack you open to feeling your own soul where all the fulfillment actually is because if you're out there and you're like i want to live a lifestyle of freedom your freedom is not out here your freedom is in here yeah and once you feel the inner freedom actually all the outer freedom shows up so my edge has been to go and do the things that i would usually say no to yeah so even to these men i spoke to this morning on um, online like one's overseas and one's in another place like in the past I would have like I don't have time to be connecting with men I have to be like focusing on my business I have to be running a webinar I have to be live streaming I have to be like finishing my book I have to be doing like I would always have these things and then I would end up sabotaging those things in some way right but I just wouldn't make time for that and so actually <laughs> like what the key has been for me is to actually, instead of going, I'll make time for intimacy, play and pleasure when, it's like, no, I'll do that now because that's going to show me the way. Yeah. And then through my intimacy, pleasure and play, this shows me the, the my purpose is fueled. Yeah. My purpose is fueled. And then it gets to come, like I get to show up in this like right now. Right? And I will then attract and call on the people that want that. They will come to me, they'll be vibing on me because I'm the transmission. Instead of me sitting here telling you, like, you can have all these things. And, and it's like, no, I'm showing up because this is what I'm embodying, yeah? And I'm not here to say that I'm there yet, right? Um, and I'm, I'm here to say that this is what I'm, what I, like, the, the work that I've been doing and, and the ways that I've been showing up differently have been, like, like have been have been really edgy for me and also just going into this new place of um doing the things i wouldn't normally do yeah the things that i would usually maybe like just not have time for and i don't want to live like that and the thing that really happened for me was that i had this moment like of of like like okay i'm this purpose-driven woman i'm a leader i'm a teacher i'm showing up and I was like, you know what? If that, if I have to, if I have that, but I don't have intimacy, then I don't want it. You know, if that means that I'm doing this, but my intimate life is 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 not getting hardly any attention, is you know putting everything else before it, then I don't want that life. I don't want that life. You know, why does it why can't, why does it have to be either or? Why can't it be in both? So that's what I've been in the discovery of. And in the discovery, I've had to face the fear of the consequences of intimacy. Yeah, the fear of being hurt again, the fear of like being rejected, the fear of being abandoned, the fear of like, and this is all the stuff that I do a lot of work on with people. And, um, and it's, it's a journey, like it's an ongoing journey, but it's like leaning in and having those harder conversations, those, those more vulnerable conversations and asking, you know, more for what I need. And um, the dogs are doing funny stuff over there. <laughs> Because they're making me laugh. Um, it's distracting me, puppies. Um, yeah, so being in the discovery of, of like, or being in the leaning in, leaning into to intimacy where, where I would be in stories of, like, no, I can't have this. Essentially, it's like, oh, I can't have that yet. Well, actually, no, you can have it all. You can have that. Um, and that's what I want for people, yeah? Like, um, I, want, I don't want surface-level bullshit, yeah? I want deep raw like vulnerable heart open crack cracking open depth you know and if i have to choose having a life where i have you know that with five people in my life or like be on stage with a thousand people i don't know that love what i'm teaching i mean like i'm gonna choose the 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 deep the deep connections yeah i mean my i believe that i can have both <laughs> let's then see why i have to choose but have those deep intimate connections in my life whether it's friendships or whether it's romantic that's going to fuel everything else that i'm doing instead of like not making time for those deeper connections yeah so um what i'm 
what I'm really, and the reason why I'm sharing this is because I'm really wanting to bring this to more people and work with more people who want this, who perhaps are, you know, they feel like they're making excuses of why they can't have the intimacy that want or know that they're not valuing it and want to be held accountable. And so this is what my coach has been doing for me. So I, I hired an intimacy, my own intimacy coach because, you know, coach need, coaches still need coaches. And more, I said to her, I said, I don't want, I don't need more healing. Like I don't, I'm not broken. I don't need more healing. And the, what I really loved about her is that a lot of her posts about play and fun and intimacy, not, not really about um, healing. And I was like, yeah, I want more of that. Like I want to like create time for that. I want to create space for that. And I know there's some stuff there. So, you know, her job has basically helped me to lean more into these connections and keeping me accountable so that I show up with her every week to, to be like, hey, did I have that conversation with that person? Okay, how can I lean more into this connection? Or like, what sexy, creative, fun experience do I want to create in my life this week? Okay, that connection is not in alignment. So, um, or this connection is in alignment for this in my life. And I, I get to create this and I get to go on adventures and I get to play, yeah? So, um, so essentially... This is she and my coach uh, Emily Herno. She just messaged me. <laughs> I was like, I wonder if she's watching my live. Um, and so yeah, so I don't. I mean, I don't want to be that coach that is is coaching from an empty place, you know. And so now I'm in a much fuller, fuller, juicier place. That um, and I and I only really want to work with a certain amount of a small amount of people who are really willing to dive deep. And so that's where my work is. Instead of like working with heaps of different people and doing heaps of different sessions it's more about like really like having some core clients who really want to who really going deep and i already have some of these but um you know i want i'm opening a couple more spaces for that who want to release themselves from their roles go deeper into where they are unconsciously avoiding intimacy and that have that life of really fulfilled in that area and you know whether it is a romantic relationship or, or it is like different connections whatever it is for you um, so if this calls to you, I'm going to invite you to reach out to me and come on the journey and really, really start to see where you're living your life from your unconsciously from your roles to avoid what you really want. And you can like, and it's fascinating when you do this work and you can be like, oh my God, like even like as someone that's conscious, like there's so much unconscious shit still going on and just when you think that you realize it all it's like oh here's another level here's another deeper dive into your unconsciousness so that's um where my work is going at the moment um is really focusing more on my one-on-ones um until i launch my book um and so yeah if this calls to you reach out to me and we'll have a chat um and one of the gifts that i have is being able to really tap in to see what's going on in your unconscious, like being able to read and see like, okay, this is where I can see that you're actually showing up and unconsciously blocking what you really want. Um, yeah, so like, and I invite you to, if you're just watching this and you're like, really start to get really real with yourself and get really honest with yourself, um, is where are you actually creating your life from a, a, like a role, something that you're, um, like you're running excuses of why you can't have what you want now. It's like, okay, I want to have, particularly in intimacy and relating, you know, I'll have that when, or I'll have that once, or like when this is done. Because generally, that's an excuse, that's an, you're in avoidance, and there's something underneath that. So I really encourage you to get curious, is what is underneath um, your story, and what are you actually avoiding? And if you want help, like going into that, um then <laughs> thanks em yeah i'm gonna listen to your message shortly um then where was i going with that <laughs> distracted me um yeah yeah so and exactly so many teachers and healers lose themselves into this and um i i that's what happened to me like i was like too busy being a teacher and a leader and creating so much for everyone else and not enough for myself <laughs> and I was like fuck that I'm not doing that shit anymore so um 
Yeah, and I would love to know, like, comment below, like, what is it the story that you're telling yourself? Like, let me know, what is it that you're telling yourself like, of why you can't have something until, like, what is it, what is that you're usually telling yourself? Like, when I've done this, then I can have that, yeah? And then underneath that, what is it that you're avoiding? Maybe I should run, like, a five-day challenge on this. Mm, I'm going to have to think about that. If you think I should run day a five-day and I help you get really clear and to see your unconscious blocks and what actions you need to take, um, let me know. Like, I'm curious about doing something like that. But I'm also, this is the other thing that I do now. I have a million trillion ideas for things and I don't act on it until I know it's 100% aligned. Because in the past, it used to come from the avoidance. Like, I'll create, 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 create. And that's why I was so busy creating all this stuff. And now I don't take action until I know it's fully 100% aligned and it's a full fuck yes, like this is aligned for me and not coming from avoidance. So... So watch this space. <laughs> All right, loves. Um, thank you for listening. And I look forward to connecting with some of you a bit further. Um, of course, feel free to reach out. Bye.